my name is Bill Deere and I directed Harry and the Hendersons. Uh, very grateful for that wonderful experience with Amblin and uh, came off an amazing story. So I, can, I can tell you a, uh, a Hollywood story that uh, is what dreams are made of. I was in the editing room one night at Amblin uh, working on amazing stories and Steven Spielberg knocked on my door and he said, how's your cut going? I said, very good, very good. He said, you want to run it for me? I said, it's not quite done yet. He said, you want to run it for me? Yes. And your finger is already on the button of the movie Ola. So we watched the entire rough cut of the amazing stories and he said to me, do you have a movie you'd like to do? And I said, well, actually, I have a movie called Harry and the Hendersons. And uh, I said, I'm just about, you know, finished with the polish of the screenplay, and I could get it to you in about five days. And he said, well, tell me the story of it. I said, well, you know, I'd rather wait till the screenplay is done. And he said, tell me the story of it. <laughs> Harry Hendersons just fell out of my mouth because you don't, you don't not tell the story that, uh, you know, in that situation. And he said, well, come in my office tomorrow morning, we'll have a talk. He said, uh, we might be able to get that movie done. I know some people. And it's his graciousness and his kind of wonderfulness, uh, you know, his guidance carried us through that movie. And I'm, uh, and they have Drew do the poster. Uh, I mean, iconic artist, the, the best poster director in the universe, poster artist in the universe. I was very grateful. So uh, I'm thrilled to be here. You know, it's thrilled to see Drew again. It's thrilled to see Martin Levy again. It's thrilled to see everybody. Um, but it was a great experience, a wonderful, wonderful experience at Amblin. Uh, for a young filmmaker, you know, I, my mom managed a theater in Toronto in the 40s, and we didn't have TV, and I only saw movies, and I thought, whatever this is, that's probably my calling. And eventually, living in Detroit, I had exhausted my opportunities, and I thought, I got to take a chance in California. And, uh, and Stephen was one of the, really after a number of years here, he reached out and uh, really lifted me up and i never ever forget that. Talk a little bit about your Harry and Henderson's poster that's on display. That's uh, oh. a beautiful piece of art. In there. Yeah, that, that piece of art, that was the original poster. That was the one that I kind of loved the most. It ended up on the cover of the novelization and unfortunately it wasn't the poster. What I loved about, about it and we had, and I, I look back now, we made a mistake. We, are, we, we sort of took an E.T. approach and we were not going to show Harry. We were going to wait till the audience came and then they would experience Harry on their own. That was a mistake. Had we shown Harry, I think we'd have gotten more people in. So the idea that was there was a negative space that depicted Harry and the family, you know, Harry had just left the house and the family was in awe, in shock and awe, uh, looking at them. Uh, and that was my favorite poster, actually my favorite poster. We ended up with a poster that I don't think quite sold it enough. And I think Sid Scheinberg nailed it. One day at lunch, we were having, uh, we were in the cafeteria at Universal, and Stephen and I and some folks from Amblin, and uh, uh, Sid Scheinberg came by and said, you guys are making a mistake. You gotta put Harry on your poster. And you know, he was right. He was absolutely right. I think had we done that, it would have been a different outcome. But. Uh, nothing, nothing uh, will ever tarnish the gratefulness for uh, having that opportunity. And I see where Netflix is featuring Harry as a December film 30 years after it's been made. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. What is it about the Amblin films, uh, Spielberg's guidance, just that era of filmmaking that really speaks to their timelessness? Well, it's, you know, go all the way back even past that to, to Casablanca when someone says it's the stuff that dreams are made of. And that's what Stephen provided you. He provided you with that opportunity. I remember when doing commercials, Alan Davio was my cinematographer on some commercials, and he said, Stephen is doing amazing stories. You should go in and, and meet. And he got, he got a, not a meeting with me and Stephen, but he got uh, a meeting with me and the story directors, and they gave me a script, and I worked on it a little bit, and they said, fine, but you've changed it enough that you'll have to meet with Stephen. And I'm thinking, to myself, meet with Stephen. Okay, you know, uh, if I don't pee my pants, that'll be good. And uh, I told him my story, uh, how I had sort of tweaked it a bit, and he uh, sort of said, you know, I wasn't going with it till you got to the end. But when do we shoot? And I think this meeting was in July, and they said the shoot is August 9th. And I thought to myself, it'll never happen. That's way too far away. But sure enough, it happened, and. Uh, it changed my whole career, so I'm uh, I'm grateful to, to Amblin. I'm grateful to Steven Spielberg. I'm grateful to Drew Struzan. I'm grateful to the movie business. You know, I've been able to live a live a dream life, telling stories with all the tools that we have at our facility these days to tell stories with. So it, it just never ends. You don't ever 
I think once you're a storyteller, it doesn't, it doesn't end.